All right, today's the day. Are you ready for this? I am ready. Good morning, beautiful people. Yes, it is still technically morning, although the sun is high in the sky. <laughs> All right, so you are trying to edit. I'm trying. And I've got stuff to do outside. Luckily, I've got uh, three helpers today. Yeah. Well, sort of four, I guess. <laughs> as much as she helps. One of them's busy in the barn building a bow, and the other ones are down there taking out aggression. So yeah. you get to come with me and work on a, a project. So I'm going to head outside. Actually, first, before I head out, check this out. Oh, my goodness. That is a basket of tiny potatoes that we forgot about. It was shoved in the back of the cupboard and we forgot about it. I did not forget about them. I knew they were there. We ran out of room in the bed that we have previously put potatoes in. No, these were for eating and we didn't eat them. Oh, well last year, yeah. We forgot about yeah, them. Yeah, but this spring we planted as many as we could fit in the bed and that's what's left. So since we are kind of working on getting our starch crops in the ground, we technically have enough time to do another round of potatoes. Uh, the potatoes have been out for, I don't know, better part of a week. Yeah. Um, we didn't really have a pest load, so I think we're in luck for more potatoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and get these a place to, to live. So I'm going to go out there and I'll show you guys where they're going to go. I'll show you what the boys have going on. So if you guys remember, I ripped half these trees out for uh, my giant compost pile. And... Uh, Jack needed to take out some aggression, so he's chopping out the sticks. And then Brett and Corbin are picking up said sticks, and we'll add the sticks to our brush pile. You, uh, you've got a lot out already. Are they coming out pretty easy? They're a little hard, but they're coming out pretty easy. Well, it's kind of hard swinging an axe on a hill. All right, I will show you guys what I got going on. So, if you guys remember, we planted our corn, and we waited a month to plant a second batch of corn. This second batch of corn is a different variety. Um, it is also a longer season. You know, I, you don't really want to plant a, uh, a what, like a hundred day corn and then plant a 30 day corn because the 30 day corn will outcompete and be tasseling. Anyways, long story short, what's going on is our, our corn that we are saving for seed, which is this stuff, it's tasseling. It's finally tasseling. Well, what we noticed the other day is this stuff that did terrible. It was because we planted it and then it just stopped raining. We barely, it had terrible germination rate because I did water it, but apparently not enough. It had a terrible germination rate. It has just really done poorly while we've had it in the ground and it's tasseling this short. I want to say we've grown this corn before and it's supposed to be about this tall. So it's obviously not doing good. Back to the potatoes. We need a place to plant the potatoes. Potatoes and corn can companion plant just fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rip out all this corn, I know, and we're gonna get potatoes in the ground. This, it's kind of the executive decision. There is not enough corn here to really pollinate, even if it was to, you know, all tassel at the same time, which it looks like it's not going to. Hi, sister. So, We've just decided to cut our losses with this portion of the bed. We're gonna rip out this poor spindly corn. We're gonna stick potatoes in here. You're gonna run through the corn. It's her favorite thing. You like the corn? You're gonna like eating the corn. All right, I'm gonna quit yakking and start ripping. Yeah, so part of the reason, I don't think I finished that thought. This stuff is tasseling. We don't want this crossbreeding with the stuff we're saving with seed. Like I said, we're just gonna cut our losses and move on. I think uh, potatoes would do good here anyways, so that's what we're gonna do. There's a lot of people that I'm sure know a lot more about growing corn than we do. I'm sure they're gonna be like, no, 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 you should have just left it. By the time you see this, this will have been over and done with probably two days ago. But we don't pretend to be experts. We are learning as we go. Next time, I think we're just gonna stick with one variety of corn and just grow a whole bunch of it. All right, I'm gonna grab the rototiller, get over here and fluff this up. I think I'm gonna add some amendments and then we're gonna get our little sprouted potatoes and just stick them in here.
All right, I think that'll work. I'm gonna plant them. I'm gonna leave this trench kind of open and I'm gonna bury the potatoes a little bit deeper so they have room to come up. And then I can actually collapse the trench once the, uh, the potatoes are up. And then I've got a couple bales of hay over here, spoiled hay. I'm gonna put over the top of everything to help keep everything moist. Cause that's really the name of the game. Having a little bout of dry weather has kind of brought back a lot of memories of dealing with the uh, the drought back in California. Uh, you kind of have to change your approach to gardening. Pretty much it wouldn't rain from, I don't know, March until December. I mean, that's been the past 10 years. That's, that's what it was like. They just quit raining and might get two inches a year. It was, it was pretty sad. But with that, if you want to grow something, you have to learn to approach it different. So, rains a lot in North Carolina, but having a little dry weather, it's like, okay, I need to take some steps to, uh, I guess, insulate myself from lack of water. I mean, I think we're coming back into rainy season out here. It's supposed to rain today, tomorrow, something like that. So it's looking like we're gonna have the rain, but it doesn't hurt to add more protection. So the hay, any kind of covering you can put, like I, I have put a whole bunch of hay on this. I need to put more because it's, starting to break down but this bed is doing great i planted some potatoes in that bed over there i planted beets and only about half of them came up and so the other half of the bed we did potatoes and when we were digging down the bed was nice and moist you know about that far under the surface so it means the hay is working whereas in here there was no covering and it was getting pretty dry so it's time to plant potatoes Take the baby is asleep. Yeah. Everybody say hello to my beautiful assistant. Nice apron. Thanks. I was uh, making bread. So. I thought you were editing. I did. I finished. It's uploading. Then I put the baby down for a nap and then I started some bread. Now I'm here. Cool. Well, <laughs> all we have to do is bury these a little bit deeper. Okay. I'm going to leave the trench open. That way it waters itself a little bit easier. Good idea. And then once they're bigger, we can collapse the trench, thereby burying them. Cool. And then after we get these in and planted, we're gonna put hay on. Okay, sounds good. All right, you ready? Yep. This is all I'm doing to them. I'm just gonna go a little bit deeper. Get them just below the surface. Okay. Bury them. All right, that wasn't too bad. Thank you for helping with the back breaking part. You're Being bent over like that just wears you out. Yeah. All right, today's the day. Are you ready for this? I am ready. It is finally the tomato pie recipe that everybody has wanted for I don't even know how long. We have tomatoes fresh from the garden. All right, I have peeled these tomatoes. It's like four tomatoes, you know, about that size. I peeled them, I sliced them, I put them in this colander with a little bit of salt sprinkled on them to help them weep. And now I'm just like pressing out the juice. This is just helps it make sure that they're not gonna be like soggy. You can have a really wet tomato pie. You can. So sometimes I've laid them on like cookie drying. Drying racks. Yeah. Cooling racks. racks. Um, so they can drip through that. But um. Now, the recipes usually call for a pie crust. I don't ever put a pie crust because I'm lazy. So. <laughs> It's just as good. And pie crust is your nemesis. I mean, I'm getting better at it, Any, but. Anybody who's been here for a long time remembers. I'm getting better at it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so then layer it. It's probably not as many tomatoes as I needed, but it's what I had. Okay. And then we layer some sliced onion. This is about a half a big sliced onion. Layer. This is probably about like 12 ish good sized basil leaves. That already smells great. <laughs> and then we do it again. 
Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Well, you don't have to rinse them. That would make them more soggy. But that probably would make them more soggy. Keep going with the layers. Tomato, onion, basil. Tomato, onion, basil. Mm -hmm. And it gets better. <laughs> but wait, there's more. But <laughs> wait, there's more. This would be good with a pie crust. I don't ever want to make it with a pie crust. So I just make it like this. Oh, it's like an added layer of work that yeah. you have to do. And this is like straight out of the garden. Exactly. Like legitimately, that's like everything we've grown. Well, it's not our onion. Even though we just harvested we our We did. Onions. They're not cured yet. Now, take about a cup of mayonnaise. Cupish. Real accurate measurement. Yeah, that's about a cup. And then about two to three cups of cheese. This is Monterey Jack. Traditionally, I think you use like mozzarella and cheddar, but. Mm, hold on. What? I needed more. <laughs> <You're a> butt. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Monterey Jack. I've used Swiss and mozzarella before. It's all good. Like cheese is just wonderful. Okay. And then a little salt and pepper. There's already salt on the tomatoes, but I add just a little bit more. Okay. And this goes on top. I realize that's kind of like a hot mess, right? Oh, it is. It's delicious. It's a delicious hot it's mess. It's a delicious hot mess. I mean, that much cheese and mayo, like, I mean, basically everything's fried. Just can't go wrong. It's fried tomatoes, fried onions, and. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My body is ready. I'm <laughs> so ready for this. <laughs> First tomato pie of the season. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. All right, and then this is going into the oven. 375, because I'm cooking fish tonight, so I need a little hot. 375 for about 30-ish minutes until that top is golden brown and bubbly. Sweet. There you go. It's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And one more thing, because I know I've started seeing comments. That horrible, horrible buzzing noise oh, that you can hear in the background is the death of that mini split. Everything works fine, like it is functional, but the motor has slowly been dying and it's been getting worse and worse and worse. It's the blower motor. I have one ordered. Whenever it gets here, I'll pro I might film putting it in, I might not, but it looks like it's an easily replaceable part if you can find them. I was lucky enough to find one, ordered one. It was a moderately sketchy website, so we'll see if it actually shows up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what that horrible buzzing noise is. In fact, like when it's quiet in here, like when we're going to bed, we turn the thing off because it's just like, so much. it's like having a cicada that won't shut up in your house. <laughs> like that's. Overall, we've been really happy with yes. the mini splits, like as a concept. Well, the one in there and the one in our room, yeah, no problem whatsoever. So, for whatever reason, I think it's probably all of the uh, cooking that goes on in it here. It could be, yeah. But I don't know. It started making noise maybe a couple months after we moved in. So yeah. I wonder if it got like drywall sanding dust in it or something. It Who knows? Yeah. But it's slowly been getting worse to the point where we're like looking at each other going, can we just turn it off? I don't care if it, it's get, a million degrees if it gets hot in here. It's yeah. just like, Neh. so that's what that noise is. Oh my gosh, I actually saw a comment and they said, I live in the city and I live in a tiny like two bedroom house. Mm -hmm. It would be so nice to have a kitchen in a big house like you guys have. Y'all, <laughs> we live in 840 square feet. <laughs> My kitchen is like 14 feet long. And that's it. You, you just do what you can with where you are. I would love to have a massive kitchen, but honestly, no matter what size you have, it's never big enough, so. That's the truth. You just do what you can where you are and you'll, you'll do it. There's actually, there's a pretty famous, um, I mean famous in the food world, Smitten Kitchen. She is like a big blogger, food blogger. She's got a couple books out. Her kitchen is like this big. Like I saw behind the scenes stuff of her kitchen one day and it's literally this big and she's like a big time blogger and has a bunch of books and everything. So do what it's you can. Uh, not the size of the kitchen that matters. That's it's right. how well you cook. That's right. <laughs> Something like that. Salmon tonight. Yay. I love salmon. Do you? That wasn't sarcastic. 
a little bit sarcastic. I used to hate salmon. I used to hate all fish, and That's then true. it grew on me. Yeah. Actually, it was salmon. Salmon was my gateway fish. It was. Uh, I used to, you know, Meg didn't really like steaks because red meat, conventional red meat bothered her. Yeah. And so anytime I cooked steaks, I had to get a salmon filet for her. And one day I was cooking up this wild caught salmon filet and it was like, it was done. And you know how when salmon's like, you put the butter on top mm -hmm. and it's just like, it looked really good. My mouth started watering. It was like, but I hate fish. But that does look really, really good. And so I ended up trying some and it was like, this is magical. It's magical. And so for a long time, all I would eat was salmon. And then now all bets are off. I eat, doesn't matter the fish, I'll eat it. Pretty much. Lemon pepper, looking crazy. Making a lemon pepper crust. <laughs> I like it crusted. Into the oven. There we go. That's cool. a pretty simple dinner. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have some Zucchini. You're gonna fry up some zucchini? Mm -hmm. There's something else. Is that it? That's just tomato pie. Tomato That's pie, some fried zucchini, and some fish. That's fish. Cool. Pretty easy. A lot of zucchini. <laughs> I should have gotten a bigger cutting fork. <laughs> you think we're gonna eat all that? I will. Okay, we're gonna cook a massive, giant, <laughs> single clove. We are. That's legitimately one That's clove. So this is the equivalent of probably like <clears throat> five or six cloves of garlic. And that's an appropriate amount. Is that bacon oh. grease? Yes. Getting this in first so the garlic doesn't burn. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> even fit. fit. Oh my gosh. Maybe I should have chopped it. this. I got it. I got it. Fine. Ooh, the fish looks good. Look at all that fat. Oh yeah. That's some good stuff. Fish. fish. That was an okay amount of garlic That's right. for that many uh, yeah. zooks. Oh, I'm sorry. What are we calling them now? Courgettes. Courgettes. Yeah, that, that's the right amount of garlic for all those courgettes. Yes, yeah, the proper name. A little time. This is the only way you can add time to your day. <laughs> I was going to say, don't add that. Why? You don't want me to add time? No. We want to eat. We're hungry. <laughs> don't add more time to the cooking. Actually, grab that jar again. It's almost empty. You're almost out of time. <laughs> okay, it's time to stop making these jokes. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, that looks good. That looks really good. Had this in ages. Bubbly and golden brown. Das fish. Das fish. Das salmon. Yes. Das. Fried zucchini. Well, not fried. fried. The pan. Yeah. and tomato pie. And tomato I think pie. everybody's excited about the tomato yes. pie. All right, let's eat. How was the tomato pie? Delicious. Was it worth waiting a year? Yes. 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 <laughs> so good. So good. That that was that was worth the wait. All right, dinner was amazing. Yes. Yeah. It's so good to have tomato pie again. Mm -hmm. yeah. A little water baby Sweet. wants to play in the water. All right, I'm just gonna turn that off. <laughs> she'll jump in it. I'll be looking at the camera and she'll just like get all <laughs> in it and, yep. It's true. So, one thing I wanted to say, today is the last day of June. Yeah. Tomorrow is Friday, which is July 1st. The 4th is on a Monday this year. We will be uh, celebrating the 4th with some friends um in an appropriate patriotic in, in manner in an appropriate way a way that we feel is appropriate for us <laughs> so with that said we might not film on monday you know there might be a video tuesday there might not so i want everybody have a safe fourth of july if you're celebrating the fourth keep all those fingers and toes yes please do <laughs> on that note hope you guys have a good fourth and we'll catch you guys on the next one bye